Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Patricia Kingston. I'm the Corporate Events Officer at Tourism NI. Um, so thank you so much for joining us uh, for today's Lunch and Learn webinar session. And we're absolutely delighted to be joined uh, by Tourism NI's Social and Digital Manager, Paul Coleman. Um, over the next half hour or so, Paul will share an update on upcoming marketing activity and the target segments, campaign timings and the channel approach for the autumn campaign. And we'll also be explaining how you can drive bookings by supporting um, and ex uh, extending the campaign through your own marketing channels. So um, I'm not going to hold anything up, but if you have any questions for Paul during today's session, just pop them into the question box at any time during the presentation. We'll pick up as many of these as possible at the end. And I'm just going to hand straight over to uh, Paul Coleman. Paul, over to you. Thanks very much, Patricia. Perhaps you could move the slide on there for me, Barry. You know, if you just want to click on the screen again, that might just give you back control. There we go. Thank you. So thank you very much, Patricia, and good afternoon, everyone. As Patricia mentioned, my name is Paul Coleman, and I am the Social and Digital Manager for Tourism Northern Ireland. And part of my role is to support you, our industry, through the delivery of marketing campaigns and a wider program of activity that runs across the year and that promotes Northern Ireland across the island of Ireland. And it's good timing, the latest data that we've seen last week shows that Northern Ireland has achieved record numbers of visitors in recent years with 5.4 million overnight visitors in 2023, of which 1.3 million were from the Republic of Ireland. But obviously we can't afford to rest on our laurels and Tourism NI are now rolling out our autumn campaign in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. And we are also working hard to bring into focus our plans for the spring campaign, which will be in market just after Christmas. So this afternoon, I will give you a bit of a flavor of the autumn campaign and what's in market now and what's rolling out over the next couple of weeks, and also opportunities for you to get involved with that and be part of it. Um, before then though, and, and as always really, it's, it's time well spent to take a few minutes just to understand the very latest market intelligence that our insights and our intelligence team are reporting because those insights obviously inform the approach that is in market now. If you could slide on for me there. Okay. So the latest wave of our consumer sentiment research, which was in market over the summer, does show a softening in demand for travel to and within Northern Ireland from consumers in the domestic market and also from consumers in the Republic of Ireland. And this reduction in travel intent that we're seeing is potentially linked to the impact of continuing cost of living pressures, which are being felt very keenly. And also, I think a reduction in the pent up demand that was very evident following COVID and the pandemic over the last number of years. If you could move on to the next slide for me, please. So just to reiterate, cost of living, personal finances, we're seeing those coming through quite strongly in the research at the moment as being barriers for people from both markets taking a short break in Northern Ireland over the next six months. However, on the plus side, consumers in both markets continue to rate Northern Ireland as a better value for money 
tourism destination than both the Republic of Ireland and GB. So we continue to be widely perceived as offering good value for money across the tourism offering, particularly for eating out, accommodation and shopping. And that value for money piece is something that we intend to dial up throughout our campaign in autumn and looking forward a little bit further in, into spring as well. So if we could move on to the next slide, please. The timings for the campaign then, um, so recognizing the pressures that are being felt by some parts of the industry, we've brought forward our campaign by approximately a month and we are already in market in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. A lot of our activity went live three, four weeks ago at this point, and this current burst of activity will continue until the middle of November before our spring campaign begins immediately after Christmas. I'm going to talk a little bit about segments and the segments that we are targeting with this particular campaign, but just to call out at the bottom of the screen, if you really want a little bit of a deeper dive into the segmentation approach for Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, please do visit tourismni.com forward slash marketing campaign you'll be able to download our campaign toolkit. And within that, you'll find pen picks and profiles for the market segments and lots of links to further information on tourismni.com where you can go off and spend some time really getting quite a deep understanding of both markets and the approach that we're taking. If we could move forward just to the next slide then, I will talk a little bit obviously about the particular segments. So within the Republic of Ireland, our, our primary focus for the autumn campaign is open-minded explorers. And the open-minded explorers, they have medium to high levels of intention to visit Northern Ireland in short term and they have a higher propensity to visit during the autumn period. So it makes sense for us to aggressively promote Northern Ireland to that open-minded explorer segment at the moment. And, and who are they? Well, we, we know that they're interested in the natural environment. They're interested in scenic attractions. They're motivated by culture. They're seeking unique experiences and as we see as we we go through this value for money is very important for open-minded explorers good food high quality accommodation is also very important for this particular segment we're also targeting indulgent relaxers and we know that the indulgent relaxers they're percentage of the market is smaller than open-minded explorers, but they're relatively high spending and they've high intention to visit Northern Ireland in the short term. And we've seen this segment grow and grow really over the last couple of years. They are the segment most likely to take a romantic break as their next short break. They love large, comfortable hotels they love to indulge themselves on a short break as well. So we have a program of activity to activate that segment and drive awareness and consideration of Northern Ireland across the autumn. And then finally, within the Republic of Ireland, we're also targeting active maximizers with a short burst of activity ahead of half term and active maximizers. They're obviously the largest segment in the Republic of Ireland. 
but they're also the youngest segment and increasingly a significant proportion of active maximizers have young families. So it makes considerable sense for us to target that segment ahead of half term when we know that families in particular will be thinking about activities that they can put together to entertain their kids during half term. Um, they love a packed itinerary. These guys, they're, they're, they're very, very active on social media and they're all about sharing those unique experiences that they find in Northern Ireland. So we're, we're, we're very focused on delivering some activity, targeting that segment. And then with regards to the domestic market, and we saw in the NISRA figures that were published last week, that the domestic market still accounts for 40% of overnight stays. So the domestic market remains hugely important for Northern Ireland. And we don't want to rest on our laurels. We want to continue our work in promoting Northern Ireland within a domestic context. So first and foremost, we are focusing on the natural quality seekers. And they're similar in profile in many ways to the open-minded explorers in the Republic of Ireland. They're a little bit older. Their, their average age tends to be 55 plus, but the research would tell us that short breaks are a very, very important part of their lives. The quality of the accommodation is hugely important for this segment. They love to plan, they love itineraries, they like to have all of that mapped out in advance, so they spend a huge amount of time researching. Um, they're nature lovers, they, they enjoy the outdoors, but their preference typically is for gentler outdoor activities as, as opposed to something that's a little bit more energetic and action-packed. Um, and in the same way then that we're targeting active maximizers in the Republic of Ireland in the run up to half term, we'll also have a small burst of activity focused on aspiring families in the domestic market because we know that obviously um, they, they, they will be particularly active in the market at that time. They have a very, very strong family focus. Activities are very, very important for this segment, including activities to suit young children specifically, but as well as the whole family. And again, these people are planners. They, 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 they love to sit down and map all of this out in advance, and they spend a huge amount of time putting together itineraries in, in advance of short trips. And in general terms, obviously, we, we, we are showcasing within our campaign a range of attractions and experiences and events, as well as ideas on accommodation. So we really want to encourage visitors to choose Northern Ireland for an, an autumn short break. We want to create that immediacy and that urgency and encourage people to book now. Um, and, and as always, the campaign will build knowledge of what Northern Ireland has to offer, particularly within the Republic of Ireland market, where we need to continue always building that knowledge campaign after campaign, and, and also really deliver very compelling reasons to book, which will include utilizing the offers that many of you have submitted to the Discover Northern Ireland website over the last couple of weeks. If, um, if you could move on just to the next slide, please. So without perhaps going too far into the weeds of everything that is in market now, what I wanted to do here really was just give a little flavor 
of what is going on and, and, and what activity will remain in market until the middle of November and then ramp up again immediately after Christmas. So our search and our social media have been live in both markets since the beginning of April and we deliver those activities on an always on basis right across the year and we dial them up particularly during our campaign periods and the rest of our activity has begun to go live since mid-August and within that mix which will remain in market until the middle of November obviously we, we, we have a broad range of activity including linear TV, broadcast VOD, premium subscription TV, out of home radio, print, uh, quite a big digital footprint as well across display advertising, programmatic, email marketing, um, and, and, and also increasingly a focus on PR and influencer marketing and working in that space to bring influencers and members of the media to Northern Ireland on fan trips to showcase all of the many great things to see and do. If we could move on there, please. As, as always, when, when we deliver these campaigns, we will again be focusing on specific regions and areas of Northern Ireland on some of our channels at different points throughout our campaign. And, 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 and we recognize really the, the, the importance of that balanced regional approach. We receive a lot of feedback from the industry to say that you see value in that approach and that you find it helpful in planning and scheduling your own activity. So I, I wanted to just draw a little bit of attention to that and the different timings that we've put in place as part of this campaign. So with, with this week, and I'm going live from yesterday, we have a particular focus on Causeway Coastal Route. Next week, from Anna and Tyrone, the following week, Derry, London, Derry. As we get to the end of the month, then in September, Mourns and Strangford. And then as we head into the first two weeks of October, Armagh and Down, and then uh, Belfast week beginning the 12th of October. So during those particular periods, we'll have a destination focus on some of our channels including email marketing, social media, print ads, various activity where we will just dial up a particular focus on specific destinations whilst the wider, larger program of activity obviously continues in the background as well. If we could move on to the next slide, please. We'll talk just a little bit about the toolkit. And um, the toolkit is um, something that we produce alongside each campaign and it will provide to the industry an overview of the campaign and what is happening at particular times. But it's also a very good resource to give a flavor of the wider program of marketing activity that Tourism NI delivers right across the year. And within the toolkit, you will find practical information. There's advice and content to help you get involved. You can download photography. You'll find links for video and social media assets. You can download the Embrace a Giant Spirit brand book and understand how you can bring our experience brand to life on your own channel. Um, the toolkit itself is 
downloadable from Tourism and I website, tourismni.com forward slash marketing campaign. And within the toolkit, you will find a link through to our content pool, which is where we house all of the downloadable assets that you can use across your own channels during this particular burst of activity now across the autumn. Um, you can follow the link, you can create a free account on the content pool and download any of the assets which you can use right across your social channels, websites, anywhere you want to use them. Um, and yeah, just, just more broadly, I think to reiterate, whilst, whilst we will typically deliver to campaigns each year in autumn and spring, there is a much, much bigger, wider program of marketing activity that runs across the year. And that includes everything from PR to influencer marketing, to social media, to email marketing. And typically within that, we're, we're very keen to work with the industry where we can. We're very keen to hear from you and understand how we can better support you. So within the toolkit, you will find contact details for our PR teams in Belfast and Dublin, our social media teams, our teams who are managing influencer engagement. So please do download the toolkit. Please do find within that the contact details for the relevant people and please do get in touch so we can understand how, how we can work with you. If you could move on just to the next slide, a really good example of probably a, an important first step for a lot of businesses is the Discover Northern Ireland website. And the, the website really is, is a trusted source of inspiration, information and support for visitors to Northern Ireland. We typically attract around 4 million visitors a year to the website. And we have a program of search and social and display advertising constantly running in the background in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland to drive visitor numbers to the website. Um, so if you're a certified accommodation provider, if you're a visitor attraction, if you're an experience, if you're an event, a listing on the Discover Northern Ireland website is a very good way to showcase your business. A big focus for us with the Discover Northern Ireland website obviously is driving referrals from our site out to industry websites and industry channels. So if you haven't already done so, I would encourage everyone to create a business listing on Discover Northern Ireland. You do that by visiting tourismni.com and following the links to allow you to create that listing. And once you have created it, it's your listing to manage. You can log into it 52 weeks of the year and update it as you wish. And internally, obviously, a lot of our activity will point back to the Discover Northern Ireland website. So I would encourage everyone to, to take that first step. If bookability is something that is of interest, we can, through our partnership with TXGB, make your listing on the Discover Northern Ireland website bookable as well and if from a cost perspective tourism and i don't charge any commission to our industry for bookings through the discover northern ireland website you will pay a two and a half percent booking fee to txgb but you won't pay any commission over and above that 
if you could move on just to the next slide, please. And perhaps maybe just move on again. If, if, if we were to maybe ask people coming off the call today to think about things that they can do immediately to be part of the campaign, but perhaps also more importantly, to be part of the wider program of activity that runs right across the year, I, I, I would probably suggest number one, you know, create your business listing on Discover Northern Ireland. If you have an existing listing, but perhaps haven't had the time to update it for a while, jump on, get it up to date. Um, if bookability is important, as I've said, then, then let's have a conversation about how we can help you become bookable through Discover Northern Ireland or how we can help you through our partnership with TXGB become bookable through your own website if you currently aren't bookable or how you can use that technology to also access third party routes to market, whether that's OTAs, some of the council websites in Northern Ireland, which are also using this technology to facilitate bookings for the industry. If you're an experienced provider, we can give you access to unique distribution platforms like Visit Britain Shop, for example. So again, plenty of information on tourismni.com about becoming bookable and using that, that technology. If it is something that is of interest, please do get in touch and we, we, we can certainly help you with that. Um, download the marketing toolkit. Uh, as I said, it's got plenty of contact information in there for all of the relevant people in the marketing department. You can also use that toolkit then to, to access lots of downloadable assets which are housed in the content pool whether that's video, photography, social media, cover photos, etc. Um, please do download that and it will give you a sense of, of, of how you can get involved now. If you're posting content on social media, please use hashtag MyGiantAdventure. We carefully monitor that hashtag. We curate a lot of the content that's published, we pull it through onto the Discover Northern Ireland website, we push it back out through our own social media channels to amplify the reach of that content. So the first step is, is please use that hashtag, hashtag my giant adventure. And finally, I would also say, you know, if, if you haven't already done so, please make sure that you register on tourismni.com it's a fantastic website full of great resources for the industry. Subscribe to the industry newsletter if you haven't done so, and you'll hear about upcoming events like this, in-person events. You'll hear about opportunities for support and how we can work with you to support you and your business. And I think, I think if we move on, just to the next slide, Patricia will, will, will probably step back in now and hopefully you've had an opportunity to submit questions as, as we've gone through and I'll certainly do my best to, to answer any of those questions now or, or indeed pick up offline with anyone if, if you prefer to get in touch directly, please do feel free to do that as well. So I'll pass back over to you at that point, Patricia. Thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. And thank you so much for um, that update. That's really useful. And um, I'm sure a lot of people will be have been scribbling some notes there as they've been listening to you. So um, thank you so much again, Paul. And um, just to let everyone know at this stage, um, we will be sharing a recording um, of Paul's live presentation um, along with a link to his um, slides um, as well uh, later on. And anyone who signed up for today's session will receive um, a link to access that um, by email once it's all ready. So um, uh, if you are um, watching a recording of the session, you can um, go and access the supporting materials um, on our Lunch and Learn Hub on the website. So that's at tourismni.com 
forward slash lunch learn. And um, so if you were to head there, um, if you happen to be watching the recording of this and you're not on that that registration list, then you can still absolutely access the slides and things as well. So um, uh, I'll, as Paul said, I'll be shortly sharing your questions with him. Um, so if you have any questions that you haven't popped into the question box just yet, there's still time. Uh, just pop them in now and we'll cover as many as we possibly can here um, today. Uh, but just before we get stuck into those, I'm going to do a couple of very quick polls um, uh, just to see how everyone's found today's session so far. Um, many of you will be already quite familiar with uh, with these polls. But the first is, how would you rate today's session um, in terms of your overall satisfaction uh, today? So that's just a score from one to five, with um, five being extremely satisfied. So I'll let you guys all uh, submit your answers there. I'll give you a second for that. Pass to Stringer first. <laughs> um, secondly, how would you rate today's webinar in terms of content and relevance to your business? So again, on a scale of one to five, that's with five being extremely relevant. Give everyone a chance to submit their response there. Okay, and our final question is just a simple yes or no. And do you plan to take any action within your business as a direct result of what we've heard from Paul today? Thanks so much. We really appreciate your feedback. And uh, we will also be sending out um, with the uh, link to the recording and the slides a little evaluation link. And if you can, take just a few minutes to fill that in. And there'll be some open-ended questions there. If you have any other comments you'd like to make or anything else you'd like to see uh, from us in future, um, then do take that opportunity to let us know at that stage as well. Um, but without further ado, uh, we'll get stuck into some questions here, Paul, if that's OK with you. Absolutely, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the first one I have is, is um, it's it's quite general, but um, uh, hopefully you can pick up on it. So someone's wondering how can they get their specific business promoted and shared more widely? Are there any specific steps that they can take to achieve that? I would recommend the first step in that journey is becoming listed on the Discover Northern Ireland website. And there is a process set out on tourismni.com that will help industry partners create and manage that listing. That, I would say, is, is the first step. Outside of that, and if you download the marketing toolkit, you will find lots of information around the program of work that Tourism and I deliver across the year in areas around PR, influencer marketing, email marketing. And I would encourage everyone to seek those contacts, reach out, have a conversation, understand how we can support you through all of the various activity that is going on all year long. But certainly the first step and probably the most important step is create that business listing on Discover Northern Ireland so we are able to then begin to refer back to that and hopefully drive some referral traffic over to your own channels as well. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Paul. Um, uh, we have um, we have someone uh, wondering here, um, so whenever they submit an offer, what happens next and where and when is that likely to appear? And would it appear on discovernorthernireland.com, for example, or are you able to share some insights on that? Yes, so the, the, within the last maybe month or so, you, you may have received a request inviting you to upload offers to the Discover Northern Ireland website. And indeed, we, we amplify that call out through our colleagues in the councils to make sure that as many industry partners as possible are aware of that and have the opportunity to submit an offer. And offers are extremely important for us, particularly in the current climate where demonstrating value for money is key. And we see that coming through 
time and again in our consumer sentiment research. One of the ways that we can demonstrate value for money, particularly versus the Republic of Ireland, for example, is to put offers in front of consumers and let them get a sense of the value for money that's available within Northern Ireland. So again, first step there is upload those offers into Discover Northern Ireland. And then our second step, I suppose, is, is, is to understand how we can push those offers out and put them in front of consumers who we know are in the market at the moment for a short break. That might be social media, it might be email marketing. We'll always try and incorporate some of those offers into activity like PR, for example, when the opportunity allows. So certainly if, if industry partners are submitting offers, we will work hard to try and push those back out into the market and try and put them in front of the people who we know are, are, are keen and are looking for this information at the moment. Okay, great. Um, someone was wondering here about contact details. Um, so if they want to get in touch with someone in the team about um, autumn offers, um, who, what's the best way to contact or what's the most up to date contact? Is there a generic email for that, Paul, or what's the best option there? The generic email I, I would use is marketing at tourismni.com. And if you drop an email through to that, we will make sure to route it through to the right people internally, and they will pick up then with you to understand how we can get that content online for you and published on site. Okay, fantastic. That's great. And is there someone's wondering if they maybe have a listing on Discover Northern Ireland at the moment um, on the website? Is there any way to find out how many people are viewing a specific listing or how, how popular your listing is? Is that something that people can find out? Is there a way to see that? Certainly we can have a view of those listings within the site that are enjoying good traction. Um, if, if that person wanted to reach out directly Again, we, we, we could certainly put them in touch with the right person on our side and we could yeah. do a little bit of work just to understand how much traffic is landing on particular listings and indeed then whether there's an opportunity to refresh the listing or add new imagery or update copy or think about different approaches that might generate a little bit more traffic and ensure a bit more visibility across the site. But if, if, if that business owner would like to get in touch, certainly we can we can have a conversation there and understand what's possible. Super. Um, we've had quite a lot of questions about the about the website um, and, and listings on the website. Um, someone's actually wondering here if there's if there is any cost to list um, an experience on the website um, on Discover Northern Ireland. No. So it's 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 entirely free for a business to create a business listing and list their certified accommodation, visitor attraction, experience, event, that's that's entirely free. Um, if you would like to make that listing bookable, we Tourism Northern Ireland will not charge any commission on that booking. You will pay a two and a half percent booking fee to TXGB, who are our technology partner. But, but obviously that's only applicable at a point that you make a booking. But if you, if you simply want to create a business listing on the website, it's entirely free to do that. There's no cost whatsoever. That's absolutely super. Okay. Um, and um, someone's wondering here, if, you have, if they have an event which is approved on the Business Hub, would it automatically appear then on discovernorthernireland.com? That's maybe a more technical question. It's... it's probably a little bit outside yeah. my no, knowledge, worry. but what, what I could do again, if, if, if we could speak with that person directly, we, we can obviously connect them with the person who can advise regarding those workflows and processes in the background. Yes, no problem at all. I thought that was a bit of a technical one. I don't know myself. <laughs> so um, when um, for someone's wondering here, when is there a particular time that you would be pushing advertisements for the natural quality seekers specifically? Um, is, is 
So we are in market now with our campaign targeting natural quality seekers and our reason for doing that at this point in the year really is that we know that generally speaking they have a high propensity to visit Northern Ireland. The research would say that they have a higher propensity during autumn. So quite often they will be the focus of our autumn activity, but more broadly outside of campaigns, we are pushing out messaging to these segments year round, but with particular reference to natural quality seekers, we know that autumn is a very good window to speak to them. So we, we, we tend to focus a lot of our activity during September, October, November window for that segment. Right. Yeah, great. And someone's wondering, they're saying, how would I be able to get onto the mailing list to be able to send offers? But essentially, um, am I right in saying that that, that would be um, so if um, onboarding and, and registering at tourismni.com in order to do that next step? Is that correct, Paul? That, that's exactly correct, Patricia. So uh, again, as part of creating that business listing to appear on the Discover Northern Ireland website, you will be able to access functionality to allow you to do that. We also work very closely with the councils in that regard. And typically when we are reaching out to the industry to invite industry to submit offers, we will always try and amplify that through our council colleagues as well to make sure that everyone is aware of the opportunity. But first step again is is register through tourismni.com. Yeah, that leads quite nicely actually. Um, there's a question here wondering, so if they upload something onto tourismni.com, is that automatically sent then to other areas like, for example, Murray Morning Down Council or, or other various councils? So should they maybe focus on making sure the Tourism and I listing is up to date as opposed to having such a focus on their the local council sites um, just to, I suppose to save a bit of time and adjust their admin or are they best to still go to the local councils as well? It, it's, it's probably a good conversation to pick up offline but in general terms how that works nine of the 11 local councils are using the same technology platform that Tourism and I are for okay. our visitor facing websites and that collaboration creates a lot of economies of scale when it comes to collating product listings and data and what we will try to do obviously is where product listings are coming through from the council websites we will understand if we can then surface those on Discover Northern Ireland. So it, it, it's worth potentially having a conversation around that with that person just to understand how their council and their particular region are uploading information and then just understand the automated workflows in the background as, as to whether or not that can be published on Discover as well. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, you've been absolutely in the hot seat today. We've had so many questions and thank you so much for everyone who submitted a question. Um, we've, been, we've been inundated, so if there is a question you've submitted and we haven't been able to come back to you live today, um, we will aim to follow up with people um, afterwards and we have contact details for anyone who has submitted a question. So I'll be sharing them all with Paul and we'll try and uh, come back to any queries that we might not have been able to pick up here the I keep wanting to say this morning today this afternoon um, and just a reminder as Paul said earlier the toolkit um, uh, for the campaign is available now at tourismandi.com forward slash marketing campaign so that page is live and that toolkit's there ready to download if you do want to visit that page um, today right away before we even have um, the other materials ready um, and uh, I, I'm going to do a shameless plug for our next webinar our uh, next TED Experts webinar is actually just next week um, and I hope some of you will be able to join us uh, then. So we're going to be hearing from um, industry expert Elaine McInaw, um on strategic pricing for your business. So during that session we're going to help you set and review pricing strategies and to maximize sustainable growth and looking of course at the potential pitfalls of short-term pricing strategies and, and the, the importance of having a longer-term um, strategy in place. So that one's next Monday the 16th of September 
at 10 a.m. And if you'd like to join us and you haven't uh, registered just yet, there's still plenty of time. That's the beauty of a webinar. Uh, so um, we don't need to know how many teas and coffees to order. Um, so tourismandmanai.com forward slash TED um, is where you'll be able to find uh, full details and a link to register for that if that's of interest to you. Um, lots of other exciting activity coming up as part of the 2024-25 um, Tourism Enterprise Development Programme. So do keep an eye on your emails as well in the coming weeks for more upcoming opportunities. Um, and if you're not already signed up to tourismandi.com, um, as Paul and I have both said, it's really, really worth your while uh, to do that. So not just um, for your listings, but also uh, to ensure you can uh, access our dedicated e-learning platform, which has been uh, specifically specially developed to support the industry here um, and also to make sure you're not missing out on any upcoming opportunities or events and webinars as well. So um, I'm like a broken record, but if you head to tourismandi.com, there's a little um, sign up or log in, I think on the top corner and just click in there and put in your details and away you go. It's very straightforward. Um, so all that remains now is for you to say thank you so much, Paul, for your presentation, but also for um, uh, one of the one of the longest q and I've had in a while there. So um, thank you so much. Um, and thanks also to Barry and Eden at Eventful who are working behind the scenes and, and monitoring all your questions and sending them through to us um, and keeping everything flowing uh, on the technical side. So thank you so much. And thank you, most importantly, to everyone that has joined us here today. And uh, we're delighted to have a fantastic uptake for this session. So I um, hope you've all found it really useful and hopefully see you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now. Bye.